Catch me floating through your neighborhood. Wrist right, neck right, no bad vibes, paper good. Seat back, hat low, music blasting loud. Make sure you grab your drinks, you grab your smoke and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? It's the dancing project. Days make great memories. We got my guy Jay Mills in the building. They landed. What episode are we on, Landon? 120. This is the Danger Project, episode 120. We got the legend Jay Mills in the building. Yeah, yeah. Long time in the making. I had to check his uh his uh sign today. I'm like, this guy is just like me. <laughs> you already know. Man, it's been a long time coming, so I'm figuring we just get right into it. Hello. We got my guy Jay Mills in the building. A lot of people have been watching these interviews, and this is a name that comes up every single time, Mm -hmm. Jay Mills. When we started this whole battle rap thing, we brought Murder Mook up here. Right. There's no chance in hell I could have talked to Murder Mook and not mentioned what I think is the most iconic battle, battle for me in battle rap. J. Mills, Murder Mook mm. in New York, outside, outside, mm. going crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? What, 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 they, they'd be like, crazy, 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 crazy. <laughs> and we finally got him in the building. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm here, man. What's up? Uh-huh. What's good with you? Cooling out, part in the left, part in the left, part in yeah, the left. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to mess yeah. the situation. Part. <laughs> bless, bless, bless. Come on. But nah, man. I was telling you when I first got here. I seen like a lot of people come here, you know, legends, you know, legends in their own, in their own way. But a lot of people wasn't outside when I was outside. I don't know what questions you want to ask me, <laughs> but I'm one of them people that when I go, I could, I, I'll tell a story <laughs> from the beginning to the end. And you might not get a chance to really ask no questions. So that, but that's what I want. If so you every- have, yeah, if you have anything specific that you want to ask me, <laughs> You should probably ask me before I start talking my shit. Nah, I'm nah. So, honest. so, so that's what I want. I'm gonna keep it a buck. When, when, when yeah. people, when people watch a dancer project, a lot of people wonder what the hell we do. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't really an interview. We're sitting down and kicking it. So, you for, know, the questions do come in there. But. For my, for my following and my people that's uh, watching right now, you know, following me on Twitter and following me on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Let them know uh, when you first found out about me. Because I could tell you when I first found out about you, but it's yeah, irrelevant yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to know, like, when was I'm not the, I'm not the legend. When we, we got that seat right there because that's where the legends sit. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? So I, w- w- however they meet me, this is, this is how they're going to meet me and find yeah, out about me, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm irrelevant today. And that's how I always look at it. It's it, When we do conversations, because we're genuinely fans, right? So I heard about you. I was, I was a young kid, and it was like, you know, it was dial-up internet days. You know what I'm saying? Air share or yeah, like yeah, lime wire yeah, share. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, that tells you, uh, that's a time that, frame that, in itself. That lets you know where I'm from. Air <laughs> share and lime wire? Uh-huh. And then... A wild poem for me. I'm watching, <laughs> I, I, I watched the battle, obviously, because that's, that's the first time I saw it. Jay Mills, Murder Mook. Okay. And um, that was my introduction to both of y'all. And I'm like, when I'm watching, because Murder Mook... He was, uh, when he's up there, he was like bars and, and, and he has the, the, you know, the word play and he had his style. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And then you came up there and it was like, you, you were vicious. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. then, and then when the story ties together, when we had Mook up here, he's saying it like I was hunting for him. Like, that's who I needed to get up there. Like Mills was him. Yeah, that's and the sh- one. And shout out, shout out to Mook because, oh man, see Mook, Mook. I don't know if Mook gonna tell y'all this. Me and Mook had beef for like years for that beat for that battle. So before, I probably just started talking to Mook. I don't want to say I started talking to Mook. We probably started collectively talking to each other <laughs> as grown men, as fathers, as you know what I'm saying. Yeah. We probably collectively started talking to each other around 2017, 2018. Now, just think back how long that battle was. Between the battle with J. Mills and Murder Mook to, like, 2017, we ain't even fuck with each other. Damn. If I go downtown and some of his people see me, it might get a little etchy. 
You come uptown, try to go to the Spanish restaurant, get them a little plate real quick. It might get a little etchy before you make it back uh, up the block to the. That's wild. From a battle when we was kid, but that's how serious I took it. Yeah, now nah, you can so tell. so go back to the the phone conversation we had earlier. Yeah, that ain't nothing to talk about right here. Yeah, yeah. But just the energy, my energy always been like that. When I battled Mook, I had a six figure deal with with uh with, with Young uh, Money. No, not with Young Money yet. I had a six figure deal with Universal, I think. Okay. Because in the battle with me and Mook, he did say something about no, 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 you don't want to. So no, no, no was already out. Yeah. But when I battled Mook, I had a deal at that time. I was already on the radio. I was already like booked on Thursday nights when DJ Enough is doing Club Exit or Speed on Sunday. I was already that rapper. I really had no business. Battling Murder Mook. A lot to I lose. had no business. Mook will tell you, I had no business battling Murder Mook. Like, I had a deal. We actually battled for money. When the battle was over, they did sign crazy with the money. All right, we out of here. I left and went to a meeting about my radio spins. You know what I'm saying? So I was really out there doing shit that nobody was really. All right, I'm not going to say that. Cassidy was outside. It was a lot of other battle rappers that were doing shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, but Cassidy wasn't from New York City. I'm just talking about, yeah. I'm talking about like me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't too many people that was doing. But was what Cassidy was doing. battling at that time? Yes. This, uh, yes. At, like I know. I know. We talk a lot of shit about Cassidy. I talk a lot of shit about Cassidy. Talk a lot of shit about me. Yes. I met Cassidy in Powerhouse Studios in Yonkers. That's the Rough Riders studio for people that's not really too familiar. That's like that was like Rough Riders personal studio up in Yonkers, you know, late night on base. Yeah, they got the the pool table and D. Why they why might come in there with the dog off the leash, mm. and you know he's saying what up to everybody, but the dog saying what up to y'all too. Like <laughs> niggas good. in there, niggas in there like this. <laughs> All right, all right. And then at some point they throw beats on, and it's go time. You know what I'm saying? And I remember when they first found Larceny because that's the group Cassidy was in. Yeah, it was called Larceny, and I remember like it was yesterday. It was him, Shiz, and Ock. You know what I'm saying? It was like three of them. They was like the locks, but some new young niggas from Philly. But at that time, that wasn't a thing in New York. So they was like in the studio. Whoever come through the studio, they had to go through them. So I had plenty of ciphers with Cassidy. I'm talking about leaving night school. I used to go to Washington Irving uh, night school, and I would leave night school. My manager would come get me, and we would drive from Union Square all the way up to Yonkers, the powerhouse studio, just to wait for them ciphers to start at night. Mm. I said you were I was, hungry. I said I always. was in high school. Yeah. I said Cassidy was in the studio with Rough Riders. I said I was in high school. So that means we were probably like 17, 16 years old, in the midst of the, sh the shit that was really going on. So I might be sitting home right into like J-Arms instrumentals mm. and shit like that. Remember like Sycamore? Shout out uh, to my man Sycamore. Yeah. You're in a privileged position to learn things or two. Uh, then the <laughs> instrumental come on with the shh. <laughs> all that shit. I was the dude that would go to the mixtape spot. i buy like Brazilian bubble butt orgy. <laughs> the, the best of classic the, the, the best of the pogs versus the black girls the, the car wash shit get a, get a sun get a sunwear t-shirt or a galaxy <laughs> black tag a 3x when i could really fit a one you know what i'm saying they'll be like yo we give you two two for five or two you know what i'm saying yeah, two for yeah. seven or whatever all right i would just buy instrumental like mixtapes i remember that was a thing yeah the jam you know, shit was how real we was just talking then, yeah. about bear share and lime wire Yo, the first time I downloaded an instrumental from the internet was Freeway, What We Do Is Wrong. I mean, when that beat came out, I said I, have to, I said, I have to find this beat. I don't know what Rockefeller did, but they had that shit to the point where nobody could find that beat. So you know what I did as a geek? And I got like this little PC in the living room that I done got wild viruses on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Downloading yeah. booty talk trailers. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm painting a picture for you because yeah, this yeah, is yeah. how much I used to be at the computer, right? Yeah. So I'm downloading all of this shit, and I'm downloading <laughs> the instrumental to what we do is wrong. So now I'm starting to be like, oh, shit. 
because I'm a kid, I'm an 80s baby, but I grew up in the grimy 90s. So my first rendition of a metaphor or a punchline was put a quarter in your ass because you played yourself. Mm. I knew what video games was, and I knew a quarter could let you play the game. Oh, shit, that was the craziest shit. That was the craziest shit in the world to me until I heard some other shit later on. But until I heard something that was crazier than that, I was stuck on the metaphors of it. So I'm painting this picture to you because when I found out, oh, shit, I could download instrumentals that's not on the new mixtapes because everybody going to rap over these instrumentals. Shit, let me see if I could download some old, some old Dre shit. Let me see if mm. I could download a Big L instrumental. Let me see. Like, shit that might have been out, like, a few years ago. How about some hardcore? You know what I'm saying? You're not going to find this on the new shit or, or uh, buck them down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, start downloading shit like that and rap over that. Like, how many MCs must get this? At this point, I'm 18, 19 years old. I haven't even did no, no, no yet. But in my mind, I'm like, how the fuck I'm going to stand out Cause it was a lot of people. You got to think. I grew up where Dipset is from, so I grew up in the era of like Kurt Cobain was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm dangerous. Yeah, bang. I grew up with the Jewel shit. Like yeah. I had to go up against that shit. That shit wasn't easy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that whole that people from New York don't understand that scene. All right, so people don't understand like. When Jay Mills was doing all of the, the Smack DVDs and y'all was seeing me, that was like right around the time I did the no, no, no shit, right? Niggas was booming. It was a lot. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I think back, This, this for example, this is the 20th anniversary of no, no, no this year. Oh, fire. Shit. Congrats so I'm like, on that too. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. So I'm thinking about it like, damn. So my first single came out 20 years ago, right? I've been in the industry longer than that. But... Just to know that my first single came out 20 years ago, right? It take you back. It'd be like, damn. Think about the shit you had to do to get your, like, when No, No, No came out, I, had a, I wrote that shit at work. Let me tell you, I'm going to be real with you. I wrote No, No, No at work on a brown paper bag that came from the chicken and broccoli lunch special that oh, I bought shit. every day. And I would go to lunch and take my golf shirt out my khakis for lunch for a little yeah. while on 33rd in, in, in a medical liability office. I wrote no, no, no in there. Listen to it in the mail room as I'm getting off as DJ. No, you know how they do the. Uh, so what you have uh, to listen to this shit like a Walkman no, or some shit? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm working in the mail room. You remember Strictly Business? Yeah. Remember Tommy Davidson used to push yeah. the little cart around <laughs> and put shit Mail. on the desk? He had the little oh, cool man. relate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would do that on Monday. On Tuesday, I would foul doctor cases that's not closed, but it's still open. On Wednesday, I would put the melt like, yeah, there was some real shit on 33rd and Park Avenue, some real dope shit with benefits. First job yeah, yeah, I've had yeah, with yeah, benefits. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, cool. I wrote no, no, no. I mean, my manager, they took it enough. I still keep going to work. Getting off. So when you get off of work, say if you got a nine to five, you might could clock out some jobs, 445, 450, every day. Like, that's just the thing. Everybody start fucking getting their things yeah, together. They, time to go. <laughs> like, or they doing whatever they, you know. So at like 450, 455, we would start doing that. And I remember sometimes DJ Enough comes on at 5 o'clock. That's like the, the traffic jam. You yeah. know, every city got a traffic jam or 5 o'clock traffic or, jam. Or, or throw, throwback at noon or something like that. So at this time, DJ Enough had the, the traffic jam. And I remember he started his show off for a week with no, no, no. Like, I'm getting off work. I'm getting off work and shit. Same chicks that wasn't really giving a nigga no rhythm. New J Mills, shout out to so-and-so, so something. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm like, oh, shit. So I had one. Look, man, I grew up in the Heights. Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, those is like my homies. Like, no matter what. Ecuadorians too and Mexicans. Like I, I grew up with all of them, so it was like my homies. It was this one Spanish dude there. Yo, I remember when they was playing that shit on the radio. He used to tell the manager, "Yo, he gonna quit. Watch, he ain't gonna be here long." He gonna, and the manager used to, he didn't like that shit. He was like an older, like yeah. Spanish dude. So the, my young boy, his name was Jose. He messed with a black girl. If he's watching this right now, he's gonna go crazy. <laughs> he was the only Spanish dude there. 
that messed with like the baddest black joint. Now he worked in my department, but the black girl had like a cubicle, a desk. Oh yeah. Everybody was on her. But she was fucking with my man Jose. Yeah. He used to rub that shit in they face. <laughs> By the time we get to Friday, this all happens from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Now mind you, I just wrote this shit at lunch. This is like nothing. This is just like another song I did. By Friday, DJ Enough said some shit. He was like, shout out to Jay Mills. So you about to close that deal. Uh, yeah. Close the deal. <laughs> so we went through all of that the next week. We did the deal and all that. Now, this is my first solo deal with No, No, No. I've had a deal before that. I had a deal when I was in high school, like my senior year. But I was in a group. When my son went to jail, mm. he had the, the problems, problem children. And when he shout went out to, my son. Yeah, shout out to my son, big bro, forever. I don't give a fuck what's going on. Mice is my big bro forever, like a mentor to me, schooled me to a lot of shit. I don't give a fuck what my son has going on. I don't care what's going on politically with him or whatever. Mice is my big bro forever. And if I feel a certain way about anything that my son ever say, I know how to hit him, but I wouldn't hang him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the big bro forever. You know what I'm saying? I learned a lot of shit from Mice. And when he went to jail, our manager at the time, shout out to Tone. Tone had made, if it was 10 of them, he took like four or three and, and combined like a group. And we went and got a single deal with Motown. So this is all before no, no, no. So by the time I get the no, 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 this is why I kept going to work. Because in my mind, it's like, I, I've yeah. been through this before. Like, my first deal, I probably, it was a single deal. So I probably got like five or 10,000. No, no, no was six digits. Now, I get $900 every two weeks yeah. at this job I'm at. But I have benefits. That's a pretty, like, like for the, for that time, at 19, time, for people that don't know what yo, it is, listen, that's, that's not a bad buck right there. 19 years old, this is You're early 2000s, like yeah. 2002 probably. If, if, yes, yes, I, I just said that, yes. But if you making $900 every two weeks in 2002 and you got health benefits, that's a hell of a job. Oh yeah. Now, I just told you my first deal, I probably got five or 10 dial up front. It's, uh, I, I learned that could go qu quick going to get some throwbacks, some Deion Sanders sneakers, yeah. and some, some, some jewelry. Or some Especially shit, like in the air throwbacks. That's it. Oh, it, that's a dub. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I got the no, no, no deal. You know, you don't get your money at that moment. So I kept going to work. I kept getting up, tucking my shirt in. Put my Eddie Bauer slacks on over the Gore-Tex. Tuck yeah. them in, make the Gore-Tex look like they some work boots or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> they really used to be your get fly boots, but you got to wear these shits to work now. So now these is your uh, cuff them bitches and you keep it moving. And I remember I went to work. I remember one day my manager came to see me. And he was like, uh, Jay, you still going to that job? And I was like, yeah, I got to go tomorrow. Like, and he just started laughing at me. He knew what the, the the deal, how it was constructed. When I saw all of the numbers on my first solo deal, no, no, no was my first solo deal, to be clear. When I saw the numbers on that, I'm thinking the budget and blah, 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 blah. I didn't really think they had set the deal up for me to eat like that off of like, you know, I just, because I, I'm going off of what I got from a solo deal before. Mm. This was different. But you don't get the money right when you sign. So I keep going to work, you know. And then I go to work one day, and they call me in the office. This is where I fucked up, though. This is why you never tell people. This is I learned this at a young age. Do not tell people what you're planning to do. Just do it sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a Virgo. I, I, as you can see, I talk too much. Like I just fucking talk too much sometimes. Yeah, you talk shit too. Oh, I know God. it. I'm I fucking, know it. I'm I know fucking it. telling my man Jose, right? <laughs> I tell Jose about the deal. Jose's my yeah. man. Tell me, you know what I'm saying? Tell Jose about the deal, right? So I don't know what Jose must have went and talked with the, the, the head dude. He's like the oldest Spanish dude. Like, is, is that disrespectful, Spanish, or is it Latin? Uh, nah, nah, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I don't, Spanish, I don't yeah. So, yeah. but you know how. Older Spanish dudes, older Latin dudes carry it. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah, a yeah, younger yeah. Spanish dude. And it's yeah. like, I'm the manager. You work in the mail office. Nigga. Yeah. Get no money like that. Like, uh. So. With the baddie. Yeah, now, oh, you, now you're getting more money than him. Oh, man. Ooh. He must have went and told them something about the deal. Because I, I signed the deal, but I didn't get the money yet. He must have went and told them. So they called me. So I, t I think I told him this is going to be my last week. It's like a Tuesday or Wednesday. I think I told Jose this might be my last week. I'm going to work till payday. 
This is a lesson why you never tell people your business. See you suckers later. Oh, my God. Okay. The end of that day, they called me in the office. So they like, uh. Papi. Yeah, we, uh, we just we just think, you know, we think this would be best if this is your last day or whatever. So I'm like, my la- I'm like, there's nothing. Now, in, this, in my mind now, I'm like, well, damn, why I can't just work to the end of the week? At least get the rest of my no, money. No, no, no. No, no, no. Oh, my God. Yeah. They curved the fuck out of me. And I was like, damn. They wouldn't even, they, they, it was a power trip. You know what I'm saying? All that hearing, new Jay Mills, congratulations, you just got that deal. Now they don't even listen to DJ enough at five o'clock no more. Like before I left, that wasn't the station. They was listening to like Power 105 let's or some to shit. Like, else. Yeah, let's listen let's, to something else. I hate the shit. I'm like, damn. I used to walk around and push a cart with an apron on and put your mail on your desk in the morning. Ask you, how's your morning going? How the family doing? give a fuck how much more you was making more than me like that shit was damn near motivational for me to leave my crib that i might not even have cable in right now nigga i might not even have electricity we might be in that bitch with candles like with all the windows open like sweat dripping down the middle of the sheets because we ain't got no 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 electricity but i'm i'm finding this lacoste shirt and these eddie bauer slacks and these gore-tex to come in here Take it serious. And and you know what I'm saying? Put a smile, put the put the mail on your desk. How you doing? Hope you have a good day. When that shit changed, it was like, I said, ooh, ooh, fuck yeah. y'all in that mail. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fuck y'all in that mail. But it was yeah. beautiful that you were in that position but I needed, to say fuck y'all. I needed in that, that, mail. that because at that point, now notice all through this is no cocky. The cockiness might be as a battle rapper in the hood. But when you battling, Mooka and I'm going to tell you, I used to always have, even before the money, I was super cocky with the way I rapped. I grew up listening to Big L, Big Daddy Kane. You know what I'm saying? And you listen, then you're listening to Cam and Mace and McGruff. Like, I was a real Harlem. Children of the corn. I was one of them kids that's like, if, if I wasn't from Harlem, I would have probably still been listening to Big L, right? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So imagine being able to stand on the corner and be able to watch him walk to the pizza shop. Because yeah. I was able to do that. As a kid, I, I, I didn't know Big L, but I seen him in real time. That was enough for me. Because it's like, damn, if he could make it to Rap City, and he could make it to DITC with Lord Finesse and Fat Joe, and if he could make it to a crew like that from, from Lenox Avenue, he from right down there. Damn, I might be able to do this shit it's too. Real. Yeah. It's obtainable. It's no different than a kid that's from Lenox Avenue Seven or from Lincoln Projects or Drew Hamilton, and you grew up seeing Shamgar do this move where he throw this shit like that and snatch it back, <laughs> and then you see Kobe Bryant say some shit like, "Nah, uh, God ain't God named Shamgar." Like he taught taught me this dribble. Like it was, he was like, "You like, well, damn, that's my that's my bro Ajax. That's his brother Shamgar." Like I know Kareem Reed. Like, I, like, God bless the dead, I, I knew Ali Mo. Yo, they knew him from the and one mixtape. I used to see him play basketball and do them same moves in the park every day. So he never made it to the NBA. But I know, like... That's still walking amongst it's, legends. It's legends here yeah. where I'm at, bro. Like, I might not be able to dunk or be like a Marbury. I, that's why I said I never was able to do all the Marbury shit and all of that and Shamgar, but... On instrumentals, on on beats, I figured out a, a, the way to carve my way in for that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I took all of the shit that I seen from like Big L and Mace and Cam, all of that, even like working jobs, even doing like K Slave mixtapes. God bless the dead. You doing mixtapes and shit like that. You number twenty four. I was that nigga. I was I was happy to be the last spot on a mixtape. Mm. Just so when I go to the mixtape spot that I used to buy them pornos, <laughs> I used to buy them sunwear tees I was just telling y'all about a few minutes yeah. ago, this me. That's me. The kid who been coming here all these years, like going in the back, like looking in where ain't nobody here, like buying instrumental mixtapes and shit. Like, look, this shit is me. He happy for me, though. The fuck they wasn't happy for me downtown at, at my job for. Like... I'm just painting this picture, bro, because along these lines, you become the, oh, fuck niggas then. Fuck them. Yeah. Like, I've been this. Like, I've been this. I had a deal in high school. I had six figures at 19. Like, I went from that, that, that mail office shit to, like, no, no, no. Uh-huh. 
to like a video with Lil X in Jamaica with the niggas from the Shotters movie. Like, mm. I was just at work. Oh, y'all yeah. niggas. Y'all got me fucked up. Yeah. Who the fuck you talking to? Like, you nice. What you did? Yeah, who the fuck Now, you this is where the Smack DVD shit comes in. Because now I done been through all of that, and I got to come back to the hood, or I be at the cookouts, you be on Linux. You know, you be here. And then you hear a nigga like, they might start talking about like T-Rex or Mook or shout out to Den 10 too. You know what I'm saying? Den 10. See, Money Ave, like, shout out to Browse too. Money Ave, like, like T-Rex and Mook and like all of them. And Browse did the beats and they had a nigga that did videos for them. Most Hated didn't have that. At the, I wasn't, Charlie Clips wasn't Charlie Clips yet. He was like my friend. He hadn't started, like, running around killing niggas yet. He was just, like, my friend that battled. I mean, not even my friend that battled. He was my friend that rap. You know what I'm saying? If you ask J.R. Ryder about our world-famous battle, that was the first time I ever heard Fred the Godson rap. And I made we Rest made him peace, battle. Fred. Rest in peace. We made him battle Charlie Clips. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. this is how long we all been outside. Now, I, I want to put respect on J.R. Ryder's name, put respect on Clips and... Uh, Fred the Godson, God bless the dead, all of them, Rex, Mook, all of them, because I'm, I'm just trying to paint the picture, because at this point, now I got no, 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 right? I just told you I was making $900 every two weeks with, with benefits. But now I got over 100000 I might have like 108000 <laughs> after I paid my lawyer. You know what I'm saying? You paid the lawyer like 20000 or something yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? I might have had like 108. I have $108,000 in my account, and I'm doing, like, Cocaine City DVD, the Come Up DVD, the Smack DVD, and niggas is like, niggas want to battle me. Yeah, you were hunted. No, just just think about that. I have $100,000 in my account. I'm probably on my third, my second deal now. I didn't even get to the Steve Rifkin shit yet, who and recording with Scott Storch and Swiss. I didn't even get to that yet. This is me and Scram Jones, and I shot the video with Lil X in Jamaica, and ha, ha, ha. This is this one song, this one deal. All right, now I'm going to record the album. But I still got these niggas that's running around Harlem and New York talking like they're me. Slander so they trying to talk crazy. This, this, I just want you to understand this. They're trying to tell me in battle rap form that they're me. Like, that's why I started looking at, like, if you notice when I battle Mook, that's pro- that was probably like one of the most classic battles ever because we were literally at two different points in our life. Now we, you know what I'm saying, we goats, we legends. But at that time, Mook will tell you, he was nowhere near where I was at that time. I put up my own five like I set the bet. I'll let five wreck your neck. We were battling for 5,000. I had a fucking Commerce Bank rectangle envelope with $5,000 in my pocket just in case I lost. I was just going to give him the bread. I don't know if that's what I'm supposed to do, but I've got, I got over $100,000. If yeah. we battling for $5,000, I might, I might lose today. So right. let me battle you with the money in my pocket, worst case. He wasn't, the niggas had... <laughs> but I'm thinking they on the time I'm on. That's why I'm taking everything so serious because I'm thinking like, and then you start to think, you be like, nah, these niggas ain't got no fucking deals. You don't see these niggas downtown at no industry parties. You're entertaining this. If you don't entertain these niggas, this shit stays on a hundred and something street. This shit does not reach none of these buildings that you going in and you trying to close these deals. Or when you go to the studio and you got 50 fucking DJs that want you to do now, my gangsters and my hustlers stacking bucks get up. Shout out to DJ. Shout out to DJ Danza. He rocking with J Mills. All right, going to stop that. Now my gangsters. Shout out to DJ Chris. He rocking with J Mills. You got to do that shit for the DJs in New York, mm-hmm. Philly, Drops, Jersey. Yeah. And these niggas is talking about some battle shit. Bro. That's why I started walking around like, like talking like niggas was beneath me. Because if if in your mind y'all feel like y'all on the same level of me, nah, I have to I have to let y'all know at all costs that y'all are not on my level. Even right now. Mm-hmm. Even right now. Like, I'm gonna say this right here, cause I really want people to understand this. 
because this is a great platform now. And you're getting a lot that. of people that's paying attention and they like to grab clips and <laughs> shit. Yeah. I said some shit about uh Jay-Z and Kanye. Remember that? Remember I went wild viral for saying I seen the fade the black clip, basically. Okay. Yeah. They they tried to hang me for saying I saw the fade the black clip. I watched Gilly say the same thing to DJ Envy and Charlemagne. Nobody said nothing about it. Am I lying? Nobody said nothing about it. He said the same fucking thing I said two years ago. I broke the internet. Like, niggas started acting funny with me and all. I was like, God damn, you acting Attitude. like Jay-Z going to invite you to the Rock Nation brunch. You <laughs> acting funny with me, nigga. Like, yeah. you saw the shit that I saw. He's the, gr- the greatest. But you didn't see what I... Cool, forget it. Gilly said it. Niggas act like it was nothing. I say that to say this. Niggas will try to say, like, well, Mills, what you done? What you did? What you did? What you did? Ask them outside of battle rap what they did. Mm. I guarantee you that shit, it, it, you'll be like, what's up? Silence. Hey, what's up? I use this analogy a lot because I just like to be an asshole. Like, <laughs> right? And this all is with the, the, the me and Gilly, how you can say one thing and yeah. they'll act like it's the craziest thing in the world. But if somebody else say it, it's like, oh, damn, you're kind of right. Sheik Luch on the Benjamins, right? Yeah. God forbid if this world ended today, Sheik Luch still on the Benjamins, right? Yeah. Play the Benjamins and Sheik Luch is still on the Benjamins, right? Yeah, hell yeah. Right. No is what. the Benjamin Sheik Luch song, nope. does it say... Does it even say his name on it, or does it say Puff Daddy and the Family? Yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. But did Sheik Luch is still it? on the Benjamins. Yeah. All right? Is Bedrock my song? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Oh, wait, wait, I thought uh, that shit was your track. It's a Young oh, no, Money no. record. Yeah, right. It's not even a Lil Wayne record. It's crazy that I, I see it as a J. Mills This shit record. is Young Money featuring Lloyd. But J. Oh, Mills okay. is on Bedrock, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so if the world ended today, J. Mills is still on Bedrock, right? Absolutely. Now keep this in mind when we're talking about battle rappers right now. Just keep this in mind, because I want to know what the fuck they did. Because they'll tell me I didn't do shit. Like, what you do? Cool, you're right, I didn't do do anything. But Sheik Luch is on the Benjamins, right? And J. Mills is on Bedrock, right? Do you know that Bedrock just hit seven times platinum? Mm. Congrats on that. So you landed. That's where the bing. <laughs> yo, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's now, classic one. shit right now, there. all jokes aside, yo. Seven. All jokes aside, yo. Sheik Luch is on the Benjamins. Not his song. He did. He, if, if it ended today, he's etched in history already. If it ended today, I am etched in history already. I got my plaque for that. I got my number one plaque. No, no, no came out 20 years ago. No, no, no debuted on the Billboard charts. It might have debuted at 42. I just found this out last year just by ordering my plaques. No, no, no set trends. No, no. I was living in my mom's crib on the Billboard charts. Didn't even know it. (laughs) Just found it out about two years ago. Didn't even know it. You know what I did? I ordered my plaque with number 42 on it. Yeah, right. So when my daughter come down from the third floor to the second floor, because I grew up with a fire escape. My shit got three floors now. So when my daughter come down from the third floor and she get to the second floor, at open level, and she walk past the bedrock, seven times platinum and 100 million streams and fucking number one on the billboard charts, that's just the young uh. money shit. But I want you to see that daddy, before daddy did this, daddy was on the, that same chart. He might not have hit number one. Daddy might not have been number one, but 20 years ago, daddy was on that same chart when he was living in your grandmom's house with a job. And these niggas will talk to me like they did something because they sold tickets out on a URL event. Now you... You ain't lying. Now that's dope. That is dope. I was on tour with Lil Wayne for six months. No, it did not say J Mills up on the fucking thing in the fucking parking lot that's telling you who performing it tonight. Shit said Young Money. All my plaques say Young Money. Sheik Luch for the Benjamins? That shit don't say Sheik Luch on there, I don't think. That shit say Pop Daddy and the Family. You think Sheik Luch give a fuck oh, what man. the blacks say? Uh, yeah, or he give a fuck yeah. about this conversation with Jay Mills is pointing that out. They ain't gonna post this clip. 
they not gonna post this because this. We're gonna it, post the clip. You, but you know, but you know why they you don't. You know why they don't want to pay attention to that because it make it look like damn. You can win without putting an album out, and I know that because I was living in Miami. I was living in Miami. Wayne probably moved me out to Miami 2008 or something like that. 2007, 2008. I officially like moved everything here in probably 2010. Stayed here for a few years, probably to like 2013, 2004, probably like 2013. And one thing I learned, I used to live in the fucking quantum on North Bay Shore. Okay. There's 50 floors in there. I was on 48. Mario Chalmers was on 49. This is when he was point guard <laughs> yeah, for the yeah, Heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, in my mind, this nigga played for the Heat. Right. I play for Young Money, but I come off the bench. <laughs> I'm a realist. Yeah. I'm a realist. I come off the bench on Young Money. I don't got a single out, an uh, album out, none of that shit. How the fuck am I up here on the 48th floor? With the heat? That's the biggest crew in the world at that time, though. But what the fuck am I doing to be up here? Because you don't just you know what, get you, up You know there. what you're doing, though? You, you I, I, I had a conversation the other day with my girl because every time I'd be having guests up here, right? Oh, who's Jay Mills? I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> got you. So I started playing Bedrock. Lyric for lyric. Oh. She knows She knows yeah. every one of the lyrics. She knows all of that, but she don't, know, she don't know me like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know but that she, nigga. No, nah, but she's, no, nah, she, we, we put the track on, playing the video. She's listening to it. She knows lyric for lyric. Now what happens? Pulling up the phone. Guess that's what he has coming up here. Uh, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. That's the impact that you left. It's not like you yeah. did that track and there was like you're hidden in there. But you know nah, what? There was an impact you know what? that was left to, in there. I had to learn. I had to learn uh, with the whole Young Money shit, right? This is why I think I could speak so comfortable as far as like, bro, you, you're never going to hear me mad at Drake. You're never going to hear me mad at Nikki. They, they'll try to spin it, however. But I throw so much sauce on that whole Young Money era, all my family. I still call them relatives. You know what I'm saying? It's like family. I throw so much sauce on that shit because, <laughs> see, I, I, I look at things a little bit different, man. I tell niggas, like, y'all think y'all had it hard as artists when Drake came out? Just being artists in the industry. Yeah. Imagine wearing the same uniform. How many shots you think you putting up a night with the <laughs> nigga that put up more slaps than the Beatles, man? Mm. That's a funny it's way not to about, it. It's not about Word. J Mills. This shit could be A Mills, B Mills, C Mills. It could be any fucking Mills. It could be any name artist in the world. Sometimes you just get drafted to the team that got LeBron. Right? Yeah. Or they got Kobe. Or... My man Sham God was the truth. He got drafted to the Washington Wizards when they had Rod Strickland. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty You're a legend. Right now. But we had to, as kids, we used to be like, damn, why they don't never put him in the game? Well, Chris Whitney is the backup point guard behind Rod Strickland. So he's the third string. He's a legend in the hood, but in the league, he's behind another legend. He's, you know what I'm saying? In the right. playing, it might not be enough playing time in the game. For him to get in. You know but what I'm the saying? contract's still nice, though. The money's still coming in like I a still motherfucker, figure, too. I still figured out a way to get to the 48th floor of that building. Yeah. Hey. With the wraparound balcony from the fire escape. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? From the mail shit. room. Yeah, yeah. Putting the mail down on right. niggas shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, bro, it was many times I felt like, damn, I need to. Because I'm from that era. I'm from the era of. But what was that like living out there, though? Because now, now you got, now, now you're how old at that time? In Miami? Yeah. Mid twenties, mid twenties. I was all the wilding. Spanish mommies out there. I was wilding. Yeah, I was wilding. I was wilding. I was wilding. But I wasn't paying for pussy. <laughs> yeah, That's okay. one thing I wasn't doing. I okay. I don't knock it, but I think I was spoiled because I started meeting like I, I had a thing for porn stars, right? Yeah. So I would meet the porn stars and be like, "Oh shit, this is so like I didn't want to yeah. meet the R and B singers. Yeah. I wanted to meet." The porn stars that were on them same. Bobby Schmurda. Yeah. And Bobby Look, Schmurda you know said, that's Look, it. That's remember, all I give a fuck remember about. Remember earlier I was telling you about when I used to go buy the instrumental mixtapes? Yeah. I would buy the white DVDs with marker writing on them. Yeah. Yeah. The ones, yeah. It might just be abbreviated with a number. You know what the number and the abbreviation stand for. So what are we, what are we doing? Oh, you, you live here. Oh, no, I don't live here. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm filming. 
filming. What you filming for? <laughs> I'm filming with Bang. Like, Bang? What the fuck is Bang? Like, that's the bus shit where they... they uh-huh. Oh, that's yeah. That's fake yeah, or that's yeah. real... Oh, they filmed the bang. The bang bro shit is here. Miami. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> As time just keep going on, you go out, you in the club, start. you meet some, you be like, yo, that look like so and so, and that look like the other. One. Uh-huh. Oh, they know each other. Mm, okay. It's a network. Right. <laughs> then you uh, do man, some this shit. You just start the time of his life. Listen, the Millsy Miami era is a <laughs> wild era. That is a wild era. Yeah, of, I wasn't gonna let you skip past that. Just no like, way. We in DMs. The, D, the DM, it was bad. It yeah. was bad. Because like they might, came out because you know what? They're like, I can talk about this now because I'm past this. But I can talk about this now because once I realize, hold on, I live here. And sometimes when they visit, they don't really have nowhere to stay. Thanks. They tell it. Like, they just, once you know mm-hmm. that you meet about two or three porn stars that come to see you and they got like a, a travel bag with them. <laughs> And they say they're going to check in their room, but they've been there for like two, three days, just going crazy, letting you do whatever. But they never checked into the room, but they leave tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, she supposed to meet your homegirl? And you like, you? no, she actually oh, invited her homegirl over and let y'all have a threesome and all that. So right. you never even realized, damn, hun, her homegirl been here for two days, just wild shit over my, 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 my uh, bathroom. And then it's like, can you drop us off to the hotel? It's like, well, hold on. What happened to the reservation you had at the joint? No, they yeah, never yeah, had yeah, reservation. Yeah, they had a reservation so up at Jake Mills' room. So then I became the, you don't even have to get a reservation. <gasps> <laughs> oh, that is so nice. All right, I land at so-and-so. Cool. I'll, you can stay at the crib. There ain't nothing in there for you to take. Like, you're not going to get that much for the ASCAP plaques and, and yeah, billboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to look pretty crazy trying to go somewhere with a fucking billboard plaque. And you right weren't going to slip up. It's not like you're from Miami doing all that Miami shit. Where, you know the, I mean? door New Yorker. Man, the doorman will let me know where you went. Word. So once I realized that, that's why I said the Miami. I had to get out of Miami. I'm happy I moved yeah, out of Miami. Yeah, yeah. I'm, but you know what? I could speak about this because it was a chapter that I felt I needed. Like, you got to think about, like, fucking Drake getting lit and then fucking moving out here or moving to fucking L.A. or Houston. It's like, Word. what? I'm I'm wilding right now. I'm, But once it came, it came to a point, like, where I had a family and shit like that, I wasn't living here no more. Now, I was going to move. I was going to try to do the family shit here. I remember Wayne looked me in my face and said no. <laughs> I remember Wayne was like, well, this is Sky Emmy. Why are you going to bring me? Like, why would, this is where we make the magic at. Like, why? Yeah, like, this is where we come up with our creativity at. Like, uh-huh. none of us, are, look, none of us are raising this our is, kids here. Bad, right? <laughs> he was like, none of us are raising our kids here. I was like, all right, I get it, I get it. But he, he been out here for a minute. So had he, to, you got to, you got to get that out. Your, so y'all saw Bobby Schmurter was talking, look, you got to get it out. Your, if, if you have it in your system. Some people don't have, some people don't want that. They just want to get the money and, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a kid that grew up on Miami Vice, for instance, right? Okay. I didn't think that shit was real. <laughs> I didn't think people really drove them cars and just uh, wore suits like that every yeah, day. Like, I found that out shit. when I first came out here. I thought Ocean Drive was a set. <laughs> that shit wasn't. That shit, I, I was one of them kids that used to come out here for, like, Memorial Weekend. I First time I came to Miami, I was 15. I had no business being out here. But I remember Luke had a party. Uh-oh. This was Memorial Weekend? Yes. I, I should have been taking midterms, but my mom's let me First come out First time here. I came out here, Memorial Weekend. Trouble. And I was with my son. Now, this is how crazy this story is. I'm with my son and all this. I'm, I'm bugging. I have no business being out here, right? Went to a Luke party. And it was for a magazine called Black Gold. Come on. Oh, it's all trouble. <laughs> 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 Yo. Yo. This is all a trouble. Luke party. It was it was hosted by Big Big Tigger. No, no. Big Les and Joe Claire, probably. I am 15 years old. I have no business being at Wet Willie's. Yeah, not inside. Not inside. Near Uncle Lou. But you know, like when the, the Trick Daddy Dollars van driving by, and you're like, oh shit, they got a they playing music with his face on all sides mm-hmm. of the uh-huh. van. Like they I can do that in the street. street. Yeah. Like I'm 15. It's fucking me up. But that black gold party in New York, I, I, I didn't grow up on strip clubs. If anybody watching this, they'll know we grew up on gambling spots in New York, like the after hours spot. You know what I'm saying? Where you could gamble and shit like that. We didn't have strip clubs when I grew up. Never. And I, New York was always way more strict. 
So even if they had yeah. that shit, well, if they, they did, it was gentlemen clubs. I'm not yep, gonna say yep. they didn't have strip clubs, but it wasn't like what it became like with the bartenders and all that. So when I used to see stuff like that in the South, like freak freak boy, <laughs> like that's watching porn and all that, I'm looking <laughs> this like is it. this is crazy <laughs> right here. Yeah. Go back to New York, man. Y'all don't now. This don't do it for me, man. I, I like right. this. Don't do it for me, man. So when I moved out here, you just enjoying life, man, and you got the money to live. But living out here also taught me a lot because I want people to understand this. I didn't come out here with a a big entourage. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I came out here, I kind of, like, got with Young Money. And, you know, I'm, I was kind of, like, back and forth, back and forth. So when I moved out here, I was kind of dolo. I ain't got no relatives. I had, like, a homie or two here and there I would bring from New York and keep them with me. But I was kind of just out here. I had to learn Miami. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I had to learn yeah. Florida. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had to learn. How to navigate down here. I had to learn you you somebody. See, when you move around New York, they know you. You, you Mills, you from Harlem. You you know, we watched you grow up. You used to battle on the hood. You had the braids and all that. Out here, you're J Mills from Young Money. Everywhere you go. Uh-huh. Everywhere you go. You cannot go in Marshalls and get the polo t-shirts <laughs> for $12.99 on the little shelf thing down there because somebody may see you and may ask you. I remember one time somebody asked me for a picture. I had wild polo tees. I had about five, six pairs of them shits. You remember they used to sell them in like, I think it was Marshalls or TJ yeah, Maxx? Yeah, Maxx. Thirty dollars, thirty-two dollars. Them shit was twelve dollars. <laughs> oh God, I had wild pack. Oh, yo, <laughs> do you mind if I get a pick? I had to put all these shit down on the floor and then stand there with the stupid ass peace sign. That shit yeah. was stupid, man. But I love Miami, man. I'm glad I had that era in my life. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. I'm glad I did, man. You gotta make a run through Miami. Everybody so you, make a pit stop for you. Yeah, he was dead ass about like he you get full blown detail into the. You ask him a question, he's full I told you. detail. I told you. That's why I said, get your shit out the way. Yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah, get your yeah, shit yeah. out the way, man. Cause but what, here goes, I still here, got about like 60% of the story left. So you get you get this like intermission. But, but yeah, yeah, it is out. an intermission. <laughs> so so when you coming up, a lot of a lot of the things we like to find out as fans of individuals is how did it how did Jay Mills come to be though? Like from a child. Mm. What got you into music in the first place? What got me into music was my uncle. My, I come from a big family. Um, and my uncle used to, my youngest uncle, uh, five uncles, four aunts, I think. You know what I'm saying? So I got a lot of cousins, big family from the South. And my youngest uncle was a big, like, um, native tongues era. He was big. Dayla, he was big tribe. He was big, um, brand Nubian. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like he was big on that. So I grew up. If he's the youngest uncle, he's damn near my big brother. You Probably know what I'm saying? So I want to do. Yeah. He the coolest one to me. Yeah. The, he the Sega. The he he argue with people that Prince is more talented than Michael Jackson, and I can oh, never yeah, understand yeah, yeah. why he's uh, that person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he used to write poetry and all that. So my oh, uncle BK, shout out to my uncle BK. He was like a big part of me getting into music, but my aunt, I, uh, my aunt called us rest in peace. She was um, a big Anita Baker fan and like jazz, you know what I'm saying? She used to play like a lot of jazz at her crib with no words. So I grew up into like, in like instrumentals and you know what I'm saying? Like uh, Kashif. I remember he used to put like okay. a lot of like just instrumental music out like type shit. My like uncle used to listen to that music. So I grew up, under my uncle listening to the daylight shit and all that. So if so you I'm had at, that soul. If I'm at my grandma's crib and he playing it, naturally I want to know what this is. And majority of the things back then was samples. So it would be or it would be crews. Like I grew up in the crew era. Like I just told you he's the brand new being in daylight and all this. So now as I'm getting older, that's what I like. I like crews. You know what I'm saying? I like the uh, West Coast stuff. I like Dre and Snoop. Always like Atlanta stuff. As a, and now that I'm older, I realize that I always like Goody Mob. I always okay. like Outkast. You know what you I'm saying? It. Like I like all I like all the shit Jermaine Dupree was doing. Whether it was fucking the Brat, I had the Funk the Five album. All the classics. You know what I'm saying? So I was. You're bringing me back. Right yeah, now. I gotta, like I, I, I was. I was one of them kids now. because at this time, if you're asking me, I'm not a rapper yet. So I'm just a fan. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a fan of everything. Sponge. I was listening to Totally Crossed Out. Uh, into the 36 Chambers. I'm listening to, like, I Missed the Bus and the Mystery of Chess Boxing. Like, take one tape out, 
Then yeah. I'm tired of listening to Warm It Up, Chris. So now I'm going to listen to Cash Roulette and everything around So you me. had the cassette tapes. You had to get yeah, them in there if they like, fucked up. Yeah. And, yeah. I had one of those. Or the pencil and just get it back in there. Probably one of my cousin's much. old Walkman or some shit like that. It's four colors. Shit like a trapper yeah. keeper. You got to do wild shit to open it. Yeah. I was one of them <laughs> kids, man. So my uncle was Word. heavy on, he was heavy on like a lot of that type of hip hop. I think that's why I like when I started rapping, like I just said, uh, I would download the beats and I said like, buck them down and how about some hardcore? Cause I'm, I'm still in the moment of the shit that the older niggas is listening uh-huh. to. You know what I'm saying? They listening to mob deep and all that. Maybe I should listen to mob deep and all that. They listening sure. to AZ and maybe I should listen to AZ and Nas. So you're a true student of the game. then. Yes. A hundred, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Cause that. a lot of people stay real limited. Not, not to say that there's not a lot of people that have come up here that had as a broad mm-hmm. audience, but you're just rifling them Niggas ain't me. Yeah. <laughs> Niggas ain't me, man. I told you they not me. But I'm a, on a, 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 I talk a lot of shit, but I really am a student of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think TV helped a lot, like cable. Being a kid, being a kid that grew up in the cable era, you grew up in uh, the box. You yep. grew up in... Yep. Um, MTV, like when they was heavy on videos and shit like that. Or even if it wasn't videos, downtown Julie Brown had a show with people dancing and some shit looked like a club. You didn't know it was a set, but shit looked lit. I want to go right. meet downtown Julie Brown one day. To be there. Yeah. Then one day you're like, oh shit, who Ed Lover and Dr. Dre? They look funny. Like they got a rapper here every Friday night. It's some shit called Yo MTV Raps. Mm. And they got somebody up there. Like if I could stay up, uh, if yeah. I can stay up enough, I can watch that. And the Apollo. It's some shit called the Apollo that be coming Ooh. on, too, that my moms and all them watch. And they be having people come up there and perform every week. It's just a new person. I don't know that they pre-recorded this shit for the last six months. And they got these. I just know as a kid, if I stay up on Saturday, I can see the Apollo. If I get up early enough Saturday, I can see Soul Train. So now I'm getting this shit from Soul Train, the Apollo, fucking downtown Julie Brown, Yo MTV Raps, Rap City. Oh, when Rap City hit? Nigga, I remember yeah, Rap City exactly. with the dark skin, uh, uh, Chris. I forgot his name. He was like the kind of like the Fab Five Freddy. And then this shit became Big Les and Joe Clear. And then it became Big Tigger in the basement. Yeah. I was the kid that used to come home from school and my moms might have taped fucking Babyface Whip a Pill on Midnight Love. <laughs> I might fucking she don't want this shit no more. Let me rewind that shit back. I'm taping now. I'm taping <laughs> fucking <laughs> niggas in the basement. I'm taping Cam in the basement yeah. when it was Dipset. He was doing the shit, rapping with the money, and the beat went Got off, and money. he kept rapping. I done recorded over Keith Sweat on the Apollo from '89 on some shit. <laughs> you ever get in trouble for doing that shit? Because I used to get in trouble for doing that. Shit. Nah, I, I think my mom's. I think my mom's knew. You know how you could put the tape over the cassette. Oh yeah, and like to- over, to put like, the, like yeah. toilet tissue in the little yep, the yep. two little things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I used to stay do that. That's when Funk Flex used to do shit like get your tape decks ready and you sitting there, you thinking niggas about to start freestyling. You'd be like, man, he just keep playing. I done recorded 27 minutes. It's a 60 minute tape. I done yeah. ran out of one whole side. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm but when I tell you these stories, bro. I'm from... Yo, what's good? Can I get a drink? Man? Like, what, yeah, what, hell what, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. I, was I thought sad. you wasn't drinking. I ain't even gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nigga, I be sitting up here telling my story. Get, Everybody else come going. up here. Niggas we be got, having We got all. the Casamigos, and we got the 42. Uh, I don't know, man. Y'all, y'all jump, in, jump in the chat, man. Tell me tell me what I need to celebrate with the Danza Project tonight. With, man. Y'all jump in the yeah, chat. Yeah. Y'all tell me. We got Casamigos. We got some... What, Where's the chat at, I don't man? know. So we got some sponsors up here? I don't know. You not want yet. me to nah, not nah, say nah, some nah, people? Nah, nah, nah. We ain't putting the sponsors Yo, up look, here. Yo, look, man. Y'all need to... Look, right. man. Y'all got to come correct with the Danza Project. They need some sponsors up here. They Absolutely. Doing some, come on. They doing some dope shit for the culture, man. It's, I know my man wanted to just do battle rappers, but I like what y'all doing with branching out outside of the battle rap shit because that's going to bring a lot of people right. to the platform. It might be a lot of people that's watching this right now. They might not give a flying fuck about who Jay Mills is, but they might be here because uh-huh. they fucking saw Jim Jones going to be on here. Or they saw Brona going to be on here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or they saw fucking uh, Bobby Schmurda on here. Yeah. It's like, who the fuck is this guy? Who's this battle uh, rapper they, guy talking they about? We don't give a fuck about Jay no, no, no. We don't, they know but, Jay Mills, man. Nah, see, this, is, this is how it happened. We had Murder Mook. We had Murder Mook up here. Yeah. After that. And Mook told me, shout out to Murder Mook, man, because Mook probably going to be mad at me for <laughs> telling all these stories like this and all that. But I, I try to tell my stories and tell my story 
and put respect on niggas too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you notice through all of this, I never disrespect nobody. I might tell you what it was back then or whatever, whatever, joking or whatever, but I'm never going to disrespect niggas because we all men. We all done, we all got our own little roads of how we've been through shit. And Mook told me, he was like, nah, I definitely I want you to come. For, this was before you interviewed any of them. Like, Mook right. wanted me to come do this shit. I think Mook might have still been here. Like, yo, bro, if you just fly out here. Just come fuck with the nigga. Like, where are yeah, you doing yeah, some dope yeah. shit? Like, Shout out, Mook. And that's Mook dope. don't fuck with nobody. I don't fuck with nobody. Yeah. That, I think that's why me and this nigga, like, we do the loud <laughs> shit, and then we just be like, yo, what's good? What you doing tonight? Like, what's going on? Like, nigga, send, nigga be hitting me. That's what I said to you. I yeah. was like, yeah, I was like, just wait till we link up. It's just going to be Yo, it's, love, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Sometimes, sometimes it's like that, man. But I, I just want to say, I want y'all definitely to get as many fucking sponsors as you want. I don't give a fuck if I come here and y'all got fucking some potato chips here laying here. As long as they want to fucking put their shit on your platform so that people can see it, man. Like, I can't wait for that shit to come. I, I like to see that. Like, I like this whole shit right here, too, because it's just you. Yeah, it's just, you. Right. it's just you. It's just you. It ain't like the money. They didn't come in yet and try to swoop your shit from you and be yeah, like, well. Yeah, yeah. Banners and uh, shit. Well, who really owns the IP over here? Like, what's really going on? Yeah. They, 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 not, they not doing that yet. But by the time they get to that point, it'll be too late. Y'all already built something. You already built something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just if, if, if. Yeah, know, no, no 360 deals over I, this. Yeah, way. yeah. You and I, I, I know I, I like to say this a lot. But I think when you say this, you put things in perspective. Okay. When you say shit like, if it all ended today. If you if you go through this interview, I'm going to say that shit a lot. Because I almost died a few times. Through different shit. Not getting... I ain't never been shot. I ain't never been stabbed. I've been shot at. But I had seizures in my sleep. I had a tumor in my throat that had to get lasered out. So what makes you more ill than me if you get shot? <laughs> yeah. right. We dead. That's a good point. We dead. Dead is dead. So if it all ended today, when they search the Danza project, it's done already. Let's go. You get what I'm saying? Mm. It's done already. Landing like it's pew. it's done already, yo. It's 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 if y'all don't never do another interview, yeah. What's done is done already. Absolutely. Can't nobody come with they shit looking like this? Can't nobody do it like this? Cause it's gonna be like, oh, that's like to do the dancer project. You never saw the dancer project? Hold on, give me a minute. Let's go. <laughs> it's done already. It's yeah. too late. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I say, like, if it all ended today, my nigga, Sheik Luch is still on the Benjamins. Bedrock is still bedrock. If it ended today, Wayne is Wayne. Mm -hmm. The fuck is we talking about? Like, nigga said Drake got more slaps than the Beatles. You know what the fuck the Beatles are? <laughs> uh. Like, just think about that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This nigga ain't from Brooklyn or Harlem or, like, I don't just, I don't give it up like that because Drake is my homie. I give it up like that because Drake is Drake. Yeah, right. And I've been to Canada since he's became Drake. Uh. I live here with some of you niggas in the States. Y'all ain't got it like that. <laughs> I'm here with y'all. Yeah. Let's be real. We're yeah. here with each other. Y'all don't have it like that. So why not just say you seeing some shit you never seen before? Same thing with Hove. Word. I never seen this before. This nigga just was performing in Paris at Pharrell's Louis Fat. I don't. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. the legends I grew up watching, they ain't do the shit he doing. <laughs> this is the first time I'm ever seeing this before. I just seen a nigga pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. On the fucking scoring list. Yeah, shout out James. I just seen a nigga do that. And they telling me that this nigga ain't that nigga. This nigga, he got the most points and almost got the most assists. Yeah, he's wild. So he almost, yeah, that he almost gave away more points than he scored. Mm -hmm. And he scored more than everybody. I'm a Carmelo a Anthony fanatic, my nigga. Sometimes you got to just give it up when you see it. What is LeBron on the fucking all-time assist list? Uh, he's, Please, somebody tell me what is. I don't LeBron know what number it is on the all-time assist. But he is list. in the top ten. Just think about that shit. Yeah, it's crazy. He's number one in the scoring, but he like what top ten or top five? If he top five, that's crazy. He might be top five. I know in the playoffs, he's like he's he's probably one in both. I know John Stockton probably number one. John Stockton in probably the playoffs got, though. John I think Stockton is number one. John Stockton is number one? In order, top five, it goes John Stockton, Jason Kidd, Chris Paul, LeBron James, number four, and then Steve Nash. Yeah, LeBron James. Hold on, hold on. You said Steve Nash, and then who? Steve Nash is five. And then who's six? Uh, Mark Jackson. And then who's seven? Magic. Who eight? 
Oscar Robertson. Who nine? Russell Westbrook. So you mean to tell <laughs> me the next nigga that's going to catch LeBron with assists Yo. is number nine? This nigga got more assists than Magic and more points than Kareem. <laughs> Yeah, you're talking about a lot. And he the re- he's more, up there in the rebounds, he too. He has more points than Kareem and more assists than Steve Nash, Mark Jackson. The niggas behind him is retired. And the longevity yeah. is important. When the people, people behind about LeBron yeah. with the assists is, and people, look, if y'all don't like the basketball talk, just come back in about five minutes. We'll wrap this shit up. <laughs> but the people behind LeBron don't even play no more. Just think about that, bro. Sometimes when you see it, you got to just give it up. Niggas don't be wanting to give it up. I think that's the thing, man. Even with the new era, it's a lot of niggas in the new era that you might not understand. Niggas might not understand all of the Dirk and the NBA young boy and why it is that, that. But it's a whole generation and a whole pool, Uh ocean of fans and listeners and kids that's following what they doing, and right. you can't tell them anything otherwise. Sometimes you got to give it up. I don't care if niggas be like, yeah, but NBA young boy, he only got that on YouTube, or, or Dirk only, uh, uh, uh. like, fam, if it's that simple, why the fuck y'all ain't doing it? Word. You know Bad. you could pay for them streams, right? <laughs> I do know you could pay for the streams. I just don't know if I want to do it 12 times. Because when you pay for them once, you got to pay for him again. Keep, Every time, yeah. Fuck you doing? You come, Imagine Jay Mills come out with a video right now. I got 435,000 views on it in three days. My next video come out, though, and in three months, I got like 17,000. Yeah. Yeah, something's going on. Bad, yeah. Bro, you could, be, you could be 19 years old and see that. Right. Or you could just be like, fuck it, I'll just pay. I'm different yeah, on that you, now. Right. I'm different. When I was young, I was I, I wasn't a fan of oh niggas trying to get me to pay to play my record on the radio and all that. Now when you think about it, it's like nigga James Brown bought the radio station. <laughs> oh, what are we talking That's about? A bad man. He yeah. bought the oh you y'all gonna play with me? Y'all payola. Watch me, nigga. I will own Ola. Yeah. Mm. Payola, I'm going to own this. Like this is the, this is what we doing, man. <laughs> man, shout out to Jay Mills in the building. Let's take a shot of some food. Look, I told, I tried to, shot right I tried to tell him from the beginning. If you don't ask your questions, <laughs> you won't. But this is ask it. Your well, this, yo, I love this though. This no. is what I do this for. I don't do yes. this. I, w- I don't I, do this for the cornball shit. I don't do this to satisfy everybody else's needs. Yeah, I built this platform. We've built this platform. For the sole purpose of we're fans. You know, you know, I was telling you on the phone, I'm like, chill. Yeah. Right? Cause cause we tried to make this happen a few times for the people yeah, that don't yeah. know. And, and I'm, I, I'm grateful I, I, that I apologize. Happens. I said I gotta make sure I make it right. That's why I made sure I jumped on the flight next day. Let's get it right. Let's get it salute, right. salute. But, salute. But what I was yes, saying yes, is yes, the sole yes, purpose yes, of what yes, we're yes. doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. The sole purpose of what we're doing is to be able to sit here as fans. Chris and I, we're just Humble dudes yeah. that are literally just enjoying this process. We still do our own shit, business, work. You feel me? Uh-huh. Every, everybody, everybody got their thing. Yeah, they got when, when we're sitting here, it's like we get the opportunity to be a fan from the start. I always say to people, a lot of these new artists that had came up here early on, I was like, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't even jumped into your whole catalog yet. Mm-hmm. What I want to do is be able to hear your story so when I listen to the tracks... I'm like, oh, okay, that's You get real. it, you get it. You, you know what I'm saying? Right, and that's exactly it. what's going to happen here today, But it, except for I already heard all Jay Mills. But now when I go yeah. back to it, it'll make, everything certain, changes. Certain things make, make more sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times we get caught up in the moment. You know what I'm saying? And then a lot of times you get caught up in the moment and the moment pass. Like, um, shout out to Nori. I spoke to Nori when I... Uh, I hadn't left Young Money yet, but I had moved from Miami. I, uh, my daughter was born in 2012. So at that time, that's around the time with the Miami Millsy era, I had to like kind of kind of like calm that down because my pops was never there. Mm. So I was, I don't, I mean, it is what it is, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But he not here, so rest in peace. But I don't want to, I, I don't want to shit on him, but I don't want to make it seem like my mom's wasn't, my mom's, right. you know what I'm saying? Like Word. she did, she did what it, she it, did. It so, you know, 
I didn't have no pops, so in my mind, it's like, nah, my kids, as much as I could be there, I'm going to be there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'll move. I was, in my mind, I'm like, well, damn, I, can, I make my money on the road. So at that time, my, my, my baby moms, I'm like, she need to be stable. I could make money anywhere. So let's move back up top. I got family there. You got family there. We Support. tried that shit. Shit was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. Because, why, why? Hold on, why? Because me moving back Jeez. to the tri-state area after I had been living in Miami as a bachelor, to move back there as a family man, it was too slow. Yeah. It was too like change of pace. Like I, right, what I'm, what I'm used to here is me being able to just be the kid I was when I grew up, and the kid I was when I grew up, that ain't the man I am right now. I tell people I went to Young Money as a 20 something year old kid, and I left a 30 something year old man. You know what I'm saying? I left there running around the hotels trying to fuck every girl in the world. I left there with a daughter in the world. Mm. Not to take anything from every girl in the world, but maybe God let you have that chapter right before this chapter. Because yeah, your ass would not have been able to be fucking every girl in the hey, world. Shout out to you, because with your daughter, I don't you know want I don't want this to go uh, unspoken about. Shout out to you, because you hold your family down. You're not somebody yeah, that's out there yeah. fucking around and shit like that. You hold you hold yeah. your wifey down. You hold your kids down. They see that when they when it's they see It's from not having, bro. No, I don't want to say not having because my mom, I told you, my mom's, anybody know Mama Millsy? My mom's is like, like a superwoman and she a Leo. So she's strong. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like Shout she out a, mom. Yeah, my mom's <laughs> is different, man. But I didn't have anybody there with me. You know what I'm saying? I hit, I hit grand slams and my mom's was clapping. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Okay. At the baseball game, yeah, I had yeah, a yeah. grand slam and my pops wasn't there. I he said he was coming, I see what but he didn't come. You know what I'm saying? Remember yeah. the Will Smith episode? Yeah. Where he went, I, I, I'll never forget waiting all weekend one time. I, I had that feeling, but my mom's never kicked his back in. She's like, you going you gotta, you gonna learn? You know what I'm saying? And I think I respected her even more because of that. So, of course, when you have a kid now, I want to be... I want to be everything that I didn't have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I take the I take being a parent, being a father serious. Like my lady, she had a kid before we had our daughter. So sometimes people be like, "Yeah, that's, that's you, you had a you, you got two or you got what?" Because I never said he my stepson. Mm. So it's like you might have just been knowing me, and then one day I just be like. Yeah, I got a kid on the way. Like, oh, that's dope. And then you see me, and it's this little girl, but it's this other little kid. And you're like, who this nigga? Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, nah, that's my son. It's like, oh, all right. You had a kid before? It's like, like nah. Yeah, but that's my son. You, that's you know what I'm saying? So and and, I, and I, I, I'm i such a G with it. You know what I'm saying? I don't ever even really speak on this, but I always carried it with my lady. Like, he don't got to call me dad. I'm going to still call him my son, but... He don't have to call me dad. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because your father is still alive. And your father still, right. he still make a, he still try. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, he yeah, ain't yeah. just like a nigga that just, we all have our moments. You know what I'm saying? But, and it was times my baby moms used to be, at that time we wasn't engaged. So I'm saying my baby moms from at that moment. She yeah. my fiance now. But okay. <laughs> I used to say shit like. Well, we, seen, we seen the video you dropped on. Yeah, the yeah, you know man. Real you know what I'm saying? I was, I, and then, right I kept there. telling her, I'm like, yo. You didn't say anything yet. Like, you just, I was down there a while long. Like, if you look at the video, like, I'm like, <laughs> wait a second. Yeah. yeah, she just got him and gave me a hug. I'm like, all right, fuck, I so guess that's yes. The like, answer is yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? So, but I, I, men don't realize we're knocking the wind out of them when we say yo, that, though. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, I always used to tell her, don't be, you know what I'm saying? Don't be so hard on him. He try. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I never wanted him to feel like he has to make a choice. Or when he around me, he might be able to call me dad at this time. But then when he on the phone with his pops, he don't know whether to call me dad or not. Because it's uh, like, nah, that, that's your that's your father. That's your, fuck, you got two dads. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm never going to call him my stepson. And I would right. never I would never carry it like, that's more of my son than his son. Because I've been here since you was a... It's like nah, that's plus, yeah. plus coming from your what you were saying, not having the you know pops yeah, around. You don't yeah. want to discount the fact that he is still there and still involved. Whether it, and still work, whether it worked out with them or not, 
that's still his son, and they still have a relationship. And now he's almost 18 years old. So it's like, imagine if I would have been a clown-ass nigga when he was growing up saying wild shit about his pops or telling her shit. Like, nah, you don't need to send him out there to see him. Getting in that relationship, that don't got nothing to do with me. As long as he ain't disrespecting his moms, he's still taking care of his son. Good dude. Bust his ass to try his hardest. You could call me Jay. You could call him dad. And like, I'm a hundred percent cool with that, and like but I'm said, never gonna call. But it takes you a real one. It takes a real one to be that. Like I, I got a stepdad, and you know, every Father's Day, you know, not to diss my real pops, my real pops wasn't around much though. Mm-hmm. When when it's Father's Day, I'm calling my stepdad up first. What's good? <laughs> you know how you how you feeling? He's like, oh, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and we and we chop it up, and and it's always the same shit. I appreciate you because he never did that shit to me. Yeah, not once. Yeah. And you got to remember, man. Um, uh, boys gonna be men at one point. They ain't uh-huh. always gonna be a boy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. I don't mean to bring up another Sheik Luch analogy, but man, damn shit, she, I, I gotta say, I have a conversation with Sheik Luch. Yeah, I got, yeah, a, lot of, she, got a lot of Sheik Luch it. shit that yeah, be running yeah. my head, huh? A legend. You gonna be older way longer than you gonna be younger. Uh huh. It's the key to life: money, power, respect. I never forget. I never forget that bar. Because you figure you're going to be older way longer than you're going to be younger. How long are you a kid? Yeah, you 19 got, years. Yeah. Now, after 19, Shit. you ain't a teen no more. It's 20. What if you die at 70? So you was a kid for 19 of the 70 years? Yeah. Come on. It's niggas that go to jail for their whole life for shit they did when they was kids. The first 19 years of that, them six chapters. Before they even niggas understood be it. Speeding. Yeah. Niggas be speeding. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to lie. I'm, I'll sit comfortably and tell niggas I'm happy to be 40. Niggas be like, you old ass nigga, you still, nigga, relax. Let me explain. Let me explain something to you, my nigga. Big L would have gave anything to be 40 with a Mm. fiance and a kid. My nigga living in a three floor house. Pac would have, Big would have, Easy would have, Pun, they would have gave anything to be a 40 year old man laying with his fiance up on the third floor of the house with five rooms and four bathrooms. Everybody got a bathroom. <laughs> yeah. We got more bathrooms than people in this shit. Yeah, talk that shit. <laughs> That's real. Though. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I take that shit, like, so seriously and grateful. Like, man, this shit could be worse. Yeah. This shit could be worse. I'd be happy for niggas, man. Prime example, when we was talking about Bronner, I'd be happy for A.B. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all got our ignorant shit with us, bro. But if you don't want to see a nigga bounce back, that means you want to see him down. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, prime example, Dave East used to be a part of my potent crew, right? Shout out to Dave East, my nigga. Okay. Shout out love Dave East. East. I love everything East done accomplished and still accomplishing. When East got ready to leave the crew, I understood. Now, the crew didn't understand. I understood because that's where I was at with Young Money. I think you're the most talented nigga in the world, but I don't really know what to do with you. And Nas fuck with you, and Def Jam fucking with you, so I would be a whack nigga if I only wanted Dave East to get money okay. with me. Right. Mm. Then I don't really want you to get money then. What, what if you? What, what if the money you're going to get don't consist of me getting it with you? Right. So I'm going I'm, I'm to be mad because you could run off and go get some M's without me? That's how niggas move, though. That's some cornball. That's some yeah. cornball shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why when you say, but that's some real nigga shit. That's just how I was brought up under niggas who did fed time. Eighty niggas from the '80s with bodies that did fed time. Came home, stood tall. See niggas out that be managing other niggas and be like, that nigga's a fucking rat, Jay. Him? Yeah. And I seen a nigga slap that nigga in the feds. He ain't do shit. Yeah. I grew up under niggas like that. Anybody watching this, I don't even have to say it. The niggas I grew up under, vigilantes. I don't have to say their names. I don't have to. Anybody who's watching this that has known me since I first came in the game, they will tell you I grew up under vigilantes. I'm not the wildest nigga in the world, but if I grew up under fucking vigilantes, then some of them motherfucking, the ways and the teachings and the conversation, the energy just going to be different sometimes. Sometimes niggas don't respect that. They look at it like, once again, who the fuck this nigga think he is? I'm Word. me, nigga. Word. I'm me. I think you could that's feel it. it. Right? Like, you know what I'm like saying? You could feel it. You could sense that energy from certain individuals. You know what I'm saying? And you carry yourself that way. But because of that, that's why I fuck with you so much. 
because you're real to who you are. You know what I'm saying? That's it, bro. That I, I can't be, I don't like to judge anything off of some other shit. That's why I told you earlier, I said, bro, <clears throat> and I can say this on the joint. Hell yeah. I said, yo, I would never handle you like, this, this ain't Gilly, this ain't Wallow. This ain't my man Joe. This ain't Nori. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I ain't I get there when I get there. Nigga, I right. handle you like, because I don't want you to handle me like that. Yeah. I don't want you to handle me like, this ain't Jim Jones. This ain't, this ain't Adrian Broner. Like, this is Jay Mills. Uh. Like, don't handle me like that, nigga, because I can handle you like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I like to let niggas know that, like, bro, I'm purposely not handling you like that. Because I know I don't want to be handled like Word, that. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't even got to tell me not to downplay your situation, not to downplay your platform. Well, oh, nigga, I know I might not be as big as this person. What the fuck that got to do with me? The nigga I interviewed yesterday, you ain't as big as him. Yes, mm. But I still want to interview. You know what? Fuck this interview, my nigga. Get the fuck out of my face. I don't want you on my platform. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. that's how I would be. Yeah, yeah. I go like that. I told you I'm 40, my nigga. Like, yeah, I didn't... Yeah. I mean, get Shit, it. I'm 38. I'm you know what I'm saying? Up. You know what I'm saying? If 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 I was working in that mail room at 19, Word, I mean yeah. I've been, <laughs> yeah, you been getting money for a few yeah. decades now, my nigga. So, and money is never the conversation because I done been around niggas that make my money like that. Shit, not money. I remember when I got around Wayne, that shit changed my perspective so much, bro. It's like, damn, this nigga's my age. We're in our 20s at this point. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit, who missed the G? This nigga sit outside in the Phantom all night with a black suit on, black gloves. Yeah, black chauffeur. Uh-huh. Oh, shit. Got a black chef. You got a chef? I remember when I went to this nigga house, I was like, you got a chef? Yeah, you're right. I remember the first time. I think this was when Wayne was tired of my shit, right? This is when I first got around. I used to try to be too humble, just too give him his space, whatever, whatever. But I don't realize he fuck with me. So you wouldn't bring he wouldn't bring me around if he ain't fuck with me, but I'm just trying not to, you know. Yeah, overstep. Yeah. I remember every time his chef would bring him food, right? <laughs> I would get up and leave. <laughs> right. So we was in we was in like uh what's the red light district? Shit. Amsterdam. We was in Amsterdam, right? And I think he was recording. Swagger Like Us. It's footage of it, too. Mm. He recording Swagger Like Us in, like, a hotel room and shit. This is when we started taking the equipment with us and all that. I learned how to record. He learned how to record. We would just be recording in hotel rooms and shit. go. Yo, I remember his chef came down with the food. He put the food down, all the food. I said, all right, I'm going to let you eat and get up out. He said, Mills, why the fuck you always keep leaving every time the fucking chef bring the food? He said, you think I got a fucking chef to cook for me with all these niggas around here? He said, you really think I pay him to just cook for me? Just, <laughs> he said, every time a nigga bring food, this nigga just get up and be like, oh, I'm out. Like, he ain't hungry. or something wrong with the food. Or something. I had never, yo, I promise like, you, I had never in my life seen him have a moment like this, bro. <laughs> in my yeah. mind, I'm thinking, I think you want to be left to eat, King. I ain't tripping. Right. Like, I don't pay the chef. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, but yeah, I don't right, understand. Right, yeah. I don't understand. It ain't about that, Mills. And I think if I'm eating this shit, we all eating this shit. Word. I didn't understand that because I had never really been around that other than my big homies that done did fed time and they street niggas. They, I had never been around a nigga that was born two weeks after me with all this shit. I'm right. September 11th. Wayne might be September 27th. We born in the same year, two weeks apart in the world. That's like, <laughs> So when I was born, you was born like a couple weeks later, like in Louisiana somewhere. Yeah. Damn, that's, and you got all this shit at your age? Damn. I never met a nigga that got a chef and a chauffeur, like, at my age. Wayne is different. I never, I never seen that, bro. So when I seen that, that was motivation to me. It wasn't hate. It wasn't like I want what he got. That shit was motivation the same way when Drake seen it, it was motivation. When Tiger. And we, we used to see that shit and feed off of that. Now, what we got yeah. out of it, we got out of it. You know what I'm saying? But as you sit here and listen to me today... My conversation with you, it ain't about an album. Majority of this shit just come from, ex- these is experiences I'm telling you about. These ain't even really accolades. It's just fucking experiences that made me this person. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you asking me, moments. how the fuck did you become this type of nigga? Because you got a cool conversation and shit. Like, I, when I sat down, what did I say? 
You want to ask me some shit? Yeah. Get it out, bro. Because yeah. my story is a story. Story. Like, I lived it. I didn't make nothing up. Jake Jarvis Mills. I don't even, I, I couldn't even find a name to make up for myself, bro. <laughs> Just be yourself, yeah. bro. Yeah. You ain't got to be the most gangster nigga in the world. I remember when 50 came out. I was outside for that era doing mixtapes and, you know, you trying to do the no, you putting music out. I remember when In The Club came out. I remember when Wankster came out. I remember when niggas started wearing Yankee hats and bulletproof vests with the yeah, do-rags yeah, yeah. and G a ponytail tank. under. Yeah. I remember when everybody started the G pulling, beaters. pulling guns out on a DVD. Yeah. That shit became a thing. And if you wasn't, like, on some tough shit or with some tough niggas, you couldn't really move in the industry. Yeah, you know what I'm different. saying? And then we got to the blog era. I love the blog era, bro. Like, I just want to wanna say that. If I wasn't a part of Young Money, I probably would have been a part or looked at as a part of the blog era. But I was out way before it with no, 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 and all that. So yeah. people don't know at one time, bro, J. Mill's career was staying afloat from things like Nah Right, Ill Roots, okay. AllHipHop.com, uh, Hot new hip hop. What were you doing? With them? You were contributing. Like no, I was recording my shout music. Shout out to those platforms I was recording too, my that's music. How I got put on the all that piff. shit. Yeah, like that I, piff. I was recording my shit in the crib because at this point now it ain't no 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 more. It, between no no, but before I got with Young Money, I was like recording my own shit, like sending it to the people from sending it to DJ Ill Will at Hot uh, New Hip Hop, sending it to people from all from all hip hop, sending it to Nine Right. Ill Roots. I'm sending my shit to all of these sites just like, just post my shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get so, my shit, man. But it wasn't always like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, even today, I don't really trip about not having a deal because I'm signed to myself. Right. Nigga, I wake up tomorrow and put a whole double album out on Distro Kid. <laughs> Nigga, this should be up by Friday. We is in motion. All right. me. True. And I can split the shit with the producers now. On, it's, it's so many ways to do shit now, man. Yeah, we live in a different world now. Yo, just look at this. Word. Right. This is a good example. Just look at this. It. Just look at this. It's a good example. Look at what you look just look at what you yeah, built, yeah, bro. Yeah, I'll be looking. Just you can't you can't you it's hard to enjoy this shit from within. You know what I'm saying? Like ah. Uh, you, you know that. You know that. Yeah. Cause when, you you hear so you know what it is? You gotta get away from it. Word. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that probably with battle rap. I probably had to get away from it, yo. Uh, I probably had to get away. I probably had to get away from it to to miss it or to appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Even with making yeah. music. Like, I ain't really been putting too much music out, but I've been battling a lot more. So yeah, I see that. Now you're running around. If again. that's if that's like I feel like you're just warming up to it again, too. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you came in there and you're like, okay, let me get these joints. And, and, the thing about you, though, it's not like you're sitting there and, and battling somebody just to to get that. You're, you're going, you're going for everybody's head. Yeah, yeah. You saw, I, I just battled Cortez. Shout out to Cortez. Yeah. I battled him on the uh, URL joint on band. That might have been my best performance since I came back. I battled Geechee Gotti earlier this year too. Shout out to Geechee. That wasn't that good. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. It wasn't good on my behalf. But that's when I learned the crowd could change everything. Everything. Right. Dang. You could be up there saying some of the craziest shit in the world, but if if they don't, if the reaction ain't reacting, none of that hits. N none of that even makes sense. It don't even matter. You know what I'm saying? So I learned like yeah, with absolutely. the with the big stage and the small rooms and the new era of battle rap, you got to definitely know how to conduct yourself in the midst of it. You got to know how to. You got to know what's going to grab people attention on the big stage, and you got to know what's going to grab people attention in the small room. Uh -uh. You know what I'm saying? I had to learn. I did a few battles on RBE. Did a few battles with the URL shit. And shout out it, to Smack, because when Smack was up here, we asked oh, him. Oh, shout, definitely shout out to Smack. We asked definitely him what was his Smack, most you know? iconic moment. He, he sat yeah. there, and it didn't take long. Yeah, <laughs> at all. He was like, Jay Mills and Mook. Yeah, yeah. Like, that was, that was the one, yo. Yeah. And if you look at the, the battle with me and Mook, that shit was five rounds. Yeah. Niggas don't even do five Not rounds, anymore. yo. I'm not gonna lie. I thought you were gonna start swinging. <laughs> it was so that shit that was so personal. That shit yeah. was so personal, man. But but, but but definitely shout out to Mook for that battle because he brought me out my comfort zone. Like I could have just been a nigga just running around doing my industry shit, right. but now nah, I had to get back out there and get dirty with it. So that was that was dope. And shout out to Smack, man, because people don't 
I had my issues with Smack for a long time. Like probably like damn near damn near twenty years. Me and my uh-huh. issues with Smack go back. But it wasn't really no issue. It was just more so of like I felt like a nigga wasn't giving me my props. Okay. A nigga wasn't letting the world know that before me there was none. You know what I'm saying? A nigga was making it seem like, oh nah, this is just something I built. Like, nah. Even before you came around with the camera, I was this. I was still missing. I was me before I even met you. You know what I'm saying? Before yeah. there was a URL or a stage. But I just think the way I voiced it was wrong. Was wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why as we got older and after Fred the Godson died, I started reaching back out to like him and Beasley and shit. I was like, we just got to say, yo, look. Because I would have gave anything to see Fred battle on URL. Mm-hmm. I always tell people that. And I felt like when Fred died, I was like, damn, life too short, yo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, it, and then it's not even about no money. It's just about yeah. a misunderstanding or whatever, whatever. And then it's crazy now to hear Smack say, yeah, he is right. You know what I'm saying? But it's 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 a Virgo and a Cancer. You know what I'm saying? It's two people that's strong-minded about some shit. I feel yeah. my way. Smack feel his way. I yeah, said some yeah, wild yeah. shit. He said some wild shit. So until somebody decided to be the bigger man and just be like, yo, this shit ain't about nothing, bro. Let's figure it out. That's man shit. You know what I'm saying? But Smack, he built something for a lot of us battle rappers, man. And not even just battle rappers, a lot of viewers, y'all. You know what I'm saying? He built something for the viewers. You know, they they say what they want about URL, but niggas is in an uproar because they can't just go to YouTube and watch the battles no more. You can't go to YouTube and just watch the battles no more because he gave you over a decade of some free shit. Yeah, come on. Got how, how are we supposed to make money? How he supposed to pay niggas like us if he can't get paid off of the battles that he filmed? At, at, at some point, it just don't make sense. And I'm I'm happy Smack figured out a way to turn the URL shit into like a real, like a, a, a real, not just a league, but a brand. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? I don't think people understand. Like when I tell you all about Smack DVDs, I ain't get no flight. I ain't get no room. I ain't just talking about easy to block Captain... Uh, Contract or Kayshawn contract. Yeah, Shout out yeah, to yeah. Kayshawn too. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Easy to Block yeah. Captain too. Because uh, I try not to get in the middle of what niggas be having going on and all that. Yeah, though. I hate you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> that shit. I just be wanting to see niggas win, yo. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about it. When I came into this shit, it wasn't no upfront, the, the, her back end, the deposit. Uh, like, I battled Mook for free. There was yeah. nothing. There was no big. I didn't get paid a dime for no big in my trouble or what. I didn't get paid off the DVD. I didn't get paid off the, the none of that. None. I just said big in my trouble or what and sold a bunch of DVDs for mm-hmm. a nigga. Niggas made niggas making money. With Diddy out. You know what I'm saying? You getting flown here, flew back, you get a round trip, you get a suite, you get this is a he made a, a livelihood where niggas could really, really live a good life off not even putting out music. And I feel like it's people crazy, just know? don't appreciate that shit. Cause I, I the the most sensitive fan base in the world is the battle rap fan base. Oh yeah, God <laughs> damn, it's kind of it's crazy. like they're battling. <laughs> but you know what? Comments. You know what? I, I like the I, I like the I love the battle rap community because I love them too. I try to let them. I try to I try to go into sometimes when I was a wrestling fanatic like that, right? Okay. Like if I could say some crazy shit to if I could say some crazy shit to a wrestler. If I had, like, Instagram and I could say something crazy to Ric Flair after Razor Ramon just lost to him at Survivor Series or something like that. Yeah. That was a whack at me. Uh, I'll say some crazy shit in the comments as a kid. That's that's the luxury they have now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You could just say some off-the-wall crazy shit. You might not even mean it. They'll say some crazy shit to me. I'll say something back. They'll be like, nah, I'm just fucking with you, bro. You know you're a legend. Uh, you put a goat emoji. Like, yeah, fuck yeah, you, yeah, nigga, yeah, blocked. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, Big now, K. Oh, now. my God, what he was talking about. We oh, had him up here. fucking Big K. Hold on for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on for a minute. Oh, uh, no, did he block you? Oh, I'm going to fucking Big K block <laughs> you. Fuck. Shout out to Big K, too, but I'm going to let you up, have it K. right now. So, look, check this out, right? <laughs> How y'all feel about people pulling their phones out in battles? Oh, uh, man. There's no pulling phones pulling out. Pulling their fucking phones out in battles. <laughs> Damn. 
You talking about the battles, the battle rappers? All right, so no, no, nah, nah, he's, he's talking. No, no, no. Let him talk. I don't, let him talk. I don't like this because he, this is, he's, a, he's trying to set me up. I no, I wasn't trying to, trying to set you up. He's trying to set me up. I wasn't. Right, you so just cool. said the blocking. So, so, cool. so you know what I mean? Look, like look, I know Big K be like blocking the fuck out of people. Niggas be really liking to say, "Oh, Mills lost all these battles when he came back." I got. I I I'll take the K Shine and the Geechee battle, right? Uh huh. I think when I came back, me and shout out to Enes too. I did another battle with Enes on RBE. I I, I would say that I would, that, that could go either way. Me and Ness was going at it. It was way different from the first making the band. He was he showed yep, up. Yep, yep. Shout we, out we Ness coming crazy. back with it yes, too. Yeah, he went crazy. And for the record, I don't know about this pulling out the phone shit. I'm learning right now. Oh no, that's a no no. I'm I'm gonna let you know. Yeah. Now, Big K pulled his phone out against Jay Mills. Mm. I battled Jay Murder the very next battle. He pulled his phone out twice against Jay Mills. Now, my thing is, let's say if I would have pulled my phone out against Big K, what do you think the conversation is in battle rap? Oh, yeah, they're trying to So why the fuck these niggas be making it seem like they me? Why they be making it seem like they me? No, the goalposts get moved when Uh. it's Mills. Your your field goal might be from here to there. My field goal? (laughs) Right. Yeah, you gotta hit I can't, the I can't, pull, I can't pull my phone out to check the time in a battle, nigga. More or less to look at my rhyme. Fuck that. ARP, I never spoke on this, and I got no issue with ARP. I know when I left, I know when I left RBE, niggas was trying to make it seem like, oh, you was shitting on biting the hand that feed you. ARP know why I said what I said. But if you notice, after that, I never said nothing bad about ARP. Never said nothing bad about RB. This was last year. Never. I never throw dirt on that man because I made money with him. Made money for him. You put Jay Mills on the bill, niggas want to see me lose just as much as they want to see me win. I'm uh-huh. smart enough to know that. Uh-huh. I ain't got no manager or no agent. I'm negotiating my fee. I know when it go up and I know when I raise it. I know when I do good. I know when it's like, eh. Yeah. If he takes something off the next time, I ain't mad. But then I know when it's like, <laughs> Next time he got to pay. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I never threw no dirt on ARP name. But I will say this. ARP, you know there's been times where you book me for a battle and they might tell you, or they would smoke some smoking up in the Mr. Mills room. Uh, and he'll take money out of my, my back end damn. for the smoking fee. Smoke fee. But you'll pay a nigga that pulls his phone out. Uh. Rules and regulations. So yeah. you ain't going. You ain't going to take no money out of out of the white boy. That no disrespect to white boys, but you ain't going to take no money out of. The, you know what I'm saying? Just just just, 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 just think about this. The white boy then came and pulled his phone oh, out uh. at a battle during Black History Month <laughs> on your platform as a black man. <laughs> And you paid him his full money when he left and didn't feel disrespected. But you felt disrespected by me getting a smoking fee. Not me selling the pay-per-view. <laughs> Big K is uh, Not ARP's me selling, guy. I don't give a you know fuck what I'm if it's no, I'm just saying twin so. brother. I'm just saying. I don't give a fuck. So like when if I hear you pull, say it. I don't want to say a nigga because I don't want to disrespect Big K like that, but. <laughs> Big K know how we give it. We always talk crazy. Yeah. But my thing is, I couldn't. I couldn't have pulled my phone out against Big K. No. I couldn't. Have, I couldn't have pulled my phone out against Suicide. nobody. Suicide. And then the next nigga I battled, he pulled his phone out twice. And they'll still try to tell me I lost that. No, no, no. Nobody. You didn't win no battle if you pulled your phone I respect out. Respect that. That's a loss. Judges don't take that into account. Now my. Le- it's, who the judges? The judges uh, is the people we talking about that's fucking weirdos <laughs> voting on the app. They don't even, yeah. And I love y'all, but y'all be on some weirdo <laughs> shit. You it know what I'm saying? Is. But that's their world. My thing is, if a fan pays a certain amount of, if, if, a, if a fan pays $7.99 for the URL app monthly, they can say whatever the fuck they want in them comments. Okay. If you pay $50, $70, $60 for a ticket to come to a battle and you don't like what you're hearing, who am I to tell you can't boo? Yeah. Okay. You spent more money than me today. I'm getting paid to be here. <laughs> right. You spent money out your check. Yeah. You might be late on a phone bill. No, boo, boo. I would boo too. 
<laughs> Boo, yeah. nigga, because I paid and I'm a fan. So that's why I had to I learn respect. to not go back and forth with the fans so much. Let them have it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Right, but Big K, right. don't ever say you beat me in a battle. I hate to hear people say, Mills, Big K killed you. The dog strikes again. No, he fucking didn't. Tell me three memorable lines from that battle that Big K said. Nigga said, shut up. You kiss Birdman in the mouth. The birds, the dog strikes again. I said, hold on, what? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me. What are you talking about? Niggas like, oh. I said, if I would have said that, niggas would have threw me out the building if I would have said that, man. But shout out to them. Shout out to RBE. Shout out to Big K. Shout out to Jay Murder. I literally K-Shine. never knew that story, dead ass. The I wasn't trying talk. to set you up with yeah. that shit. Not yeah. at all. I was just saying because of the blocking shit. Yeah. I know he'd be blocking but shit. But shout out to everybody jump. that I battled since I came back because I learned something from every battle. The K-Shine battle, Ness, Big K, Jay Murder, uh, Geechee, Cortez. From every battle, whether it was a good performance, bad performance, win, loss, debatable, I learned something from each battle as time go on. My last battle I just had, I felt like, all right, I, I, I think I know what they want. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really going to sit here and break it down, but I'm going to yeah, show yeah, you the yeah, battle yeah, before yeah. I leave. I'm like, I think I know what they want now as opposed to sometimes you could be too serious, too, too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the battle rap shit now, they want a lot of humor. They yeah. want a lot of, I don't care what nobody tell you. I learned that shit. I done stood up on the stage and rap, and it felt like tomatoes was about to come at me, and I just knew I was killing this shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, you might be killing it, but you might not be killing it with enough humor for us. Like, we yeah. Make us laugh. Do something. Don't yeah. just say it like that. Act it out. Like, throw the bomb over the car when you do it. Like, right. I love that about you, though. Because we're talking about battle rap. When you talk to a battle rapper, there's so much goddamn ego involved. I never lost shit. You what are you think, talking about? You would think them niggas got plaques that say seven times platinum <laughs> yeah. on their wall or 100, 100 million we're street. Right. You would think they did some shit Outside of battle rap, my nigga, like, I was the first person on a Smack DVD. You would think that the battle rap fans got plaques, the way they talk that shit, too. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Because they, oh, no, they battle, be talking battle shit. Battle rap fans, they will make you feel like your shit is trash, and they could do it ten times better. Because yeah. I'm the type of person, I click on the little default pick that takes you to their page. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. And then you can see, like, How they living? Yeah. their life. <laughs> oh, Stop man. it. You can see, like, Stop. the type of jersey they wear, like, if it got stitching <laughs> or if it's, like, yeah, yeah, ironed yeah. on or some yeah, shit yeah. like you like, oh, I'm you crazy. one of them niggas. You was a swing man nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you was a replica nigga. Shit. You wasn't a fucking authentic jersey. But they'll give you a full breakdown of how of, you fucked up and what they would have done. Of your yeah. shit. And yeah. they didn't see it. They saw a clip. Yeah. They didn't even see the shit. They don't I'm even look at the it. battles. They look I appreciate the it, too, because they... Dumb motherfuckers boost the algorithm so well. They fight with each oh, other. Oh, man. The the al- look, the algorithm, man, this is one thing I learned about the algorithm. If you care about it, attack it. If you don't, don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I'm one of them people, and I still might, like, check into the dumb shit here and there. You know, I might, but I don't follow the shade room no more. Smart, I don't follow smart. baller alert no more. And there's nothing against them. Shout out to them, but... Sometimes if I want that, I'll go check for it. I know where to okay. find it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I know if I go there, I'm going to get everything at one time. But I don't know if I want to wake up and I'm just seeing everything that's going on with everybody and their baby mother, their baby father. It's like sometimes it's too much and I ain't asked for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's the same thing. Like I had to cut the the the, the likes and the, and the and the views. Yeah. What's that? Likes in the comments. Uh, I don't even. No, I ain't cut the comments off. Okay. But I can't see how many likes y'all get on pictures no more. Okay. Oh, you could do it so you don't see it on other people's stuff too. If I cut it off. If if I cut it off where you can't see mine's no more, I won't be able to see yours no more neither. That's like the trick. Uh, You got to make a choice. But. I I like that. But why the fuck would I want to see yours if I don't want you to. If I don't want you to see mine, I mean, I don't give a fuck about the numbers at all. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So. It changes it. It really It's does. like, yo, I don't care how many views or likes you got on your shit. But if I go to some shit and you liked it, that should say liked by Danza Project and others. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't say liked by Danza Project and 900,000. Because now I'm like, damn, 900,000? Who the fuck? Who the fuck is this? Let me go to his page. Uh-huh. You see who the fuck is? He's nobody. He's one of them same people that's paying for the shit that they trying to get you to pay for on YouTube or Spotify yeah. package. or uh-huh. It's the same shit. It's just what do you feel like investing in? You know, we've had shows where I'm like, 
it, it landed landed beyond his p's and q's with it. He's he'll, he'll message in the group. He's like something's wrong. You know what I mean? Like it'll say eighteen hundred view, eighteen hundred people viewing you right now, but four seconds later. It said four people view. Nah. You know, nah. Dead ass. Nah, dead nah, ass. Yeah, we, we seen it. And I called it out. I don't give a fuck. I'm a dickhead too. Just shit, just Shout just out shit. Izzy Drake. But you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I'm looking at this that. shit. We expect that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at this shit and I'm like, ain't no way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, it, it's funny because the video ends. You know, it's like it's got 4,382 views. An hour later, shit said it had 48 views. Man. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, okay, something happened no, here. it was bad. It was you know bad. what I mean? But that's what these people like doing and paying for their shit to boost it. But the thing is, is real recognize real. Yeah. So when it comes to that money talk, you know what I mean? It's, you're going you're gonna to get separated real quick when you're going down that lane. And then also yeah. when, you, when you're really out there. Yeah, you're gonna separate yourself real quick. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough game. It's a tough game to be in. But I, I always say it's all according to what you want to invest in, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's Absolutely. all according to what you want to invest in. Some people want to invest in. They want to get the big, the big shore mics. They don't want to get the podcast mics. They want to get the ones they got on the Breakfast Club. They yeah. want to get four of those. Yeah. It's like, it's like, well, so who? Where they gonna sit? Oh, I get the shit from Walmart and the lever shit that fold down with the cup holder on it. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, well, bro, well, you don't want to invest in nothing. It's like, yeah. nah, I'm going uh, to get the so-and-so, the black magic camera. It's like, but what magic are you going to shoot on the fucking camera? <laughs> what, what, what's going to be, the, what's gonna be the magic? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is, like, especially with me being in this game for a long time, man, I done did a lot of shit where I felt like it worked. A lot of shit didn't work. You know what I'm saying? A lot of shit you... You want to try and you want to put your all into it, but then you kind of get discouraged because you might not have nobody around you pushing you like, nah, do that shit, do that shit. Uh-huh. And when you a thinker, you think so much, man, fuck, I ain't doing that. Uh, you get in the way. You, 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 you get in, the get way, in your, I get in my own way a lot with shit because I'm a thinker. I think so much. So in the midst of thinking so much, sometimes you forget the attack. That's, 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 one, of my you know biggest, that's one of my biggest struggles. And um, somebody put it to me like this. They said, that's, that's called something. And I said, what is that? He said, it's called uh, paralysis by analysis. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you spend so much time looking at the facts and the ins and the outs and the details and what ifs and how and that you end up not doing nothing at all. Okay, paralysis by analysis. And every time I, I catch myself doing it, I hear it. Paralysis by analysis. Okay, I'm doing it again. I'm overthinking it. Yeah. I got to jump in. Or I talk to a motherfucker like this. And he's like, nigga, you crazy. Do it. What you waiting on? Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, you're right. All right. He right. He right. He right. You have to. You have to. You have to. I'm a maniac. I just do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's a like, doer. He's definitely I, a doer. I, when, when I was building this, I, 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 that ass they had sent me to uh, lay out because I, I had all these different ideas. I wanted to look like this. I wanted to look like that. They sent me the thing. They're like, okay, for the invoice, uh, $1,800. I was like, oh, word. $1,800? They're going to build that whole shit? Word. So then they start building it. And she's like, uh, for this wall, it's twenty one hundred. I was like, no, no, I paid you the, <laughs> I paid you the eighteen hundred. And she's like, oh, that was just to create a layout. That's the consultation. That's the. <laughs> and I was like, damn. God and I'm damn. like, there's four more walls. Like, what, what's going on here? But what? guess what? I never even hesitated a second. I'm like, okay, could we get this one built right now? And that one built right now? And this built right now? And then I need this and I need that. I never. I just know that if I hesitate. Then, then that shit goes on right there. And I did it so many times in my life and failed because of it mm-hmm. that I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'd rather fail and said I did that shit. You know what I mean? Like, even right now, when people look at what we're creating here with the Danza Project and we're bringing up our guests and shit like that, they're probably like, man, he's milking it. What the fuck I ain't? You know what I mean? <laughs> but you building something. Yeah, man, exactly. And it's, and it's, it's about it's, building it's that brain. More than, it's worth more than what they think they seeing in the moment. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. why I told you, like, God forbid, but if it ended today, you got a library. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people still building. And in your mind, you might feel like, damn, I'm still building. I'm still building. It's like, yo, once they could go to YouTube and they got to scroll to the end and then it could click, like, view all. View all mean it's more than just what's in the thumbnails. Reload it. Now, we could show you about six of these bitches, but when you got to click view all... That means it's more than the average. 
Word. You know what I'm saying? Like you have you have exceeded these thumbnails. They have to click to if they want to see that murder mook interview, they gotta click view all because it's so many after that. Like you might have to go down like four or five pages. Yeah. That's a library, bro. You know what I'm That's saying? It's a lot of people that and you can have a library because I mean when I was doing my podcast, I got up to about 15, 16 episodes. Okay. It ain't a library though. It's just me and my man sitting there talking. We ain't got no guests. We ain't got no guests. That's how we started. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you could have a library of just talking, or you could have a library of some monumental dope stories, some some people just sitting having good conversation. You know what I'm saying? The conversation with you and your man, or me and my homie could be cool, but the conversation with me and my homie and might interview you, ask you what made you want to start this. That's a whole different type of interview than me and him talking about the Chris Paul and Bradley Bill, you know? <laughs> Word. Anybody can talk about that shit, you know what I'm saying? But a little different. everybody can't tell your story, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I really want to make sure I come and tell my story, man. I want to make sure I get it right. And I appreciate y'all for letting me just come and just fucking talk, 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 nah, talk, 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 yeah. talk, talk, Today, talk, talk, you know what I'm but saying? Real quick. So how you feel about CP3 going over to Golden State then? I don't get it. I don't get it either. I don't get it, but I guess he's at... I guess, <laughs> they wanted to dump the contract. I guess he's at that point. Well, I, I think they said if they get rid of Draymond contract, that's when they really going to have the bread. Word. But I don't but think I, I they, think they were just... I nah, think they Draymond keep, I, I think Draymond's going to You're not going to get rid of Draymond and get rid of Poole. You ain't about to do that. I think Chris Paul is at that point in his career where he about to be uh, coming off the bench. I yeah, think they, they got him for... I think they the got bench. him for, like, that second string, and then I think they probably going to try to use him Probably throw Steph at the two, let him move around a lot. CP can set up here, floor general, so he can still get him the ball and all that. I don't know. I, I got to see how it's going to work. They done had a few point guards go through, uh, go through there. So we'll see how it's, it works. It's going to be an interesting year. Again, I love the NBA or the NBA. Like I used to be just a huge NFL fan, and then everything else came second. But the NBA just be having so much damn drama yeah, to it. Yeah, I'm an NBA fanatic. Yeah, NBA that's, fanatic. That's what it is. But let's look. Let, I want to do something real quick. I want to take a brief intermi- intermission. We are live. I got to take a piss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. pour shout up another shot and whatnot. Shout out to everybody here rocking with us, man. You know what I'm saying? This is good convo. Yeah, man. I appreciate every one of y'all. We'll be right back yeah. after a brief intermission. <laughs> 